Hello everyone and welcome to this video um, where we are going to have a look at completing the square today. So completing the square is something we do when we take a quadratic expression and we write it in this form. Okay, and it's not, they don't always use an A and a B. The question might say write this in the form X plus P or squared plus B or sometimes it will be a bracket x plus b all squared plus c. Um, the letters don't really matter. The key thing is I'm writing my quadratic expression in a bracket to the power of 2 and I could have an additional term here, right? It could be plus or minus something here uh, afterwards. Um, and we're going to have a look at doing this and this might seem strange, but completing the square has a very useful, um, is a very useful way uh, in which we can find the turning point, right? The turning point of a quadratic when I sketch it. So if I'm able to complete the square, I don't necessarily have to go and sketch that quadratic to know what the turning point is. But we'll look at that in another lesson. For today, we're just going to learn how to complete the square and then also how to use this to solve a quadratic equation. OK, so let's get started. The first example uh, I'm going to use is x squared plus 6x minus 7. So I know that I want to write this in some brackets squared. And in here, I'm going to have an x, and I'm either going to have a plus, or I'm going to have a minus, and I'm going to have another term, and then I might have something outside here. So I know that I therefore am going to start by looking at x squared. And if I put this in brackets, well, then my bracket must start with x, because when I expand the brackets to the power of 2, uh, then I'm going to end up with x squared. I then look at the plus 6 here. Now, this is really easy and it works the same every single time. I'm going to halve this. I'm going to halve this. Um, half of plus 6 is plus 3. Okay? And by doing so, I'm not quite finished yet, but just let's just have a look what's happened by doing this. If I do this, then I end up with x plus 3 times x plus 3. And if I expand this, I get x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. And that simplifies to x squared plus 6x plus 9. So if I compare this, what I've created by putting x and positive 3 in bracket squared, and I compare it to what I started with, then I'm quite happy because I've got my x squared. There it is. And I have my positive 6, there it is. And now, the one thing I don't want, which I have, is plus 9. And that plus 9 has come from squaring 3, because I've got 3 times 3 there. So all I'm going to do to undo that is subtract 9 straight away. And then I'm almost finished. I just need to remember, well, I still need my minus 7. So I'm going to carry that down there into the into my expression. Then I'm just going to tidy things up and I'll be left with x plus 3 squared minus 16. There we go. Now that now I have completed the square. Okay and um, yeah there's nothing else I wanted to say about that. So uh, let's move on look at another example. <clears throat> x squared minus 14 x plus 3. So again the process is always the same. I want a bracket squared. I've got x squared there, so it's got to be x here. And I've got to halve negative 14, right? I've got to halve this. So half of negative 14 is negative 7. Now, I remember from before that when I expanded these brackets, I ended up with plus 49 at the end, right? I didn't want that. I don't want plus 49. So immediately, I need to go and subtract... 7 squared, which is 49. And then I carry down my plus 3. Okay, tidy this up. So I get x takes 7 all squared. <coughs> Sorry, and minus 49 plus 3 is minus 46. I am done. 
I have completed the square. Okay. I'm going to just make a quick summary. I have the coefficient, coefficient of x, right? That's step one. Step two is I subtract. I always subtract um, this n term, this bit, just the 7, not the minus 7, just the 7. Subtract 7 squared. And then my third step is I tidy up. Tidy up and simplify. Okay? Hopefully that all makes sense. Again, really useful to complete the square for finding turning points, but we'll look at that in another lesson. Okay. Example three. Here we go. Bracket squared. I need to put in my x and I need to halve negative five. Now half of negative five is negative. Sorry, let me pick the yellow. Negative 2.5. Or my personal preference is to write it as five over two <clears throat> because that's an exact value. Um, and generally, when we use algebra, we don't mix it with decimals. We always use fractions. So let's stick to the first one. I'll do both. X minus 2.5 squared. And immediately, I'm going to subtract 2.5 squared. And then I carry down that negative 1. And when I simplify that, I get X minus 2.5 all squared. And if I... Uh, square 2.5, then I get 6, negative 6.25, subtract 1, and that becomes minus 7.25. If I stick to using improper fractions or just fractions, depending on the numerator, then I get x minus 5 over 2 all squared, subtract 5 over 2 squared minus 1, and that's going to simplify to x minus 5 over 2 all squared, uh, minus, so that's 25 over 4, minus 29 over 4. And there we go, I have completed the square. Okay, example 4. Hopefully you're getting used to this now. If you feel confident, Pause the video and try this question yourself. So I'm going to have my bracket squared. I'm going to do x plus half of 11. I'm going to write this as 11 over 2. And I know straight away I need to subtract 11 over 2 squared. And I carry down plus 3 over 2. Simplify. x plus 11 over 2 squared. And then that becomes minus 121 over 4 plus 3 over 2. And plus 3 over 2 will become, if I change that to over 4, so that will be 6 over 4. So that's going to be minus 115 over 4. And let me just double check that to make sure I haven't made a mistake, but that should be correct, minus 115 over 4. Please do always check your work on your calculator because your exam will be completely uh, calculator-based. Okay, uh, question 5 looks slightly different, still a quadratic, still a quadratic, I just don't have a constant term at the end. So nothing changes. I put my x in, I put my squared in, and I halve the coefficient. Half of 12 is, half of positive 12 is 6. Straight away, I need to subtract 6 squared. There is no other constant to carry down, so this one's a little bit easier. I just end up with this. Okay, hopefully uh, that bit's been useful, and you can now uh, fully complete the square. We are now moving on to the next section where we are going to use completing the square to solve a quadratic equation, right? And so to solve a quadratic equation, as you are familiar with by now, that means I'm finding the roots or the x-intercepts. And up until now, you would have 
factorized uh, or you would have used a quadratic formula if the question said round your answer to a particular value. And the third way to solve a quadratic equation is to complete the square. So we're going to start with that first. Going to complete the square for x squared plus 10x minus 149 equals 0. And so I get x plus half of 10, which is 5, all squared. Immediately subtract 5 squared and then carry down my 149. And remember, it's an equation which I'm trying to solve. So I also carry down the equal 0. Um, this then becomes x plus 5 all squared. And when I simplify, subtract 25, subtract 149, I get negative 174 equals 0. Okay. Now, we have completed the square. And we can, from here onwards, also find the roots of the equation. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this, and I want to, f I want to solve for x. So what I'm going to do is I take this to the other side. I add 174 on both sides. So on the left, I'm left with x plus 5 squared equals 174 on the right. Then I want to undo the squared, which means I take the square root. So on the left, I'll be left with x plus 5. And remember, when I take the square root, it's going to be a positive or a negative. And then my final step is to move this plus 5. I subtract 5 from both sides, so I end up with minus 5 plus minus root 174. And if the question said round your answers, then you could go and work out your two x values. And it's going to be negative 5 plus root 174, which is 8.91 to three significant figures. Or negative 5 subtract 174, which will be negative 18.2 to two, three significant figures. And those are the two roots. I now have the turning point and I have the two roots of the equation. Okay, one more example of solving by completing the square. I've got my brackets squared. I take positive 5 over 2. I halve 5 over 2. Therefore, 5 over 2 divided by 2 is going to give me 5 over 4. Immediately, I subtract 5 over 4 squared, and I carry down the minus 6 and the equals 0. I tidy things up. So negative 5 over 4 all squared is subtract 25 over 16. This is going to become negative 25 over 16, subtract 6, which will give me this, minus 121 over 16. And now I need to solve. I've completed the square, but in order to solve, I'm going to move this over. So I'll get x plus 5 over 4 all squared equals 121 over 16. And then I take the square root on both sides. Square root, square root. So I'm left with x plus 5 over 4 equals the square root of square root of 1 to 1 over 16, which will be plus minus 11 over 4. And so my final answer is either, remember I need to move this over, is either minus 5 over 4 plus 11 over 4 or minus 5 over 4 minus 11 over 4. And I can then tidy that up. Minus 5, that will be 6 over 4 or 3 over 2. And that's going to be minus 16 over 4, which is just negative 4. And so there are my two 
roots for this equation using completing the square. I hope that was useful. Uh, we will practice this further in lesson.